Hi guys, this is RC Vlogs and this is the first video in the series what is large scale RC racing. Basically what I'm gonna do is show you around the car, show you the components, how it all works together, what does what, the brakes, the shocks, uh, the engine, the drivetrain and basically give you a general idea of what a large scale on road RC car is. But I'm going to do this by components and gonna start with the drivetrain so hopefully you will enjoy the video. Okay, so the engine, the heart of this car, what makes racing these cars so special, what makes these cars so special is the fact that this is a normal two-stroke engine powered by gasoline and oil. Basically, what you would find in a quad bike, in a cross bike, in any other normal real-life, uh, real-size motor vehicle, except of course modern cars. Uh, the smell, the sound, the feel, everything makes these cars feel so much more real than electric cars or any other type of RC racing. This engine has 23 centimeters of this 23 cubic centimeters of displacement and puts out around, well, to be honest, from five to seven horsepower, which is extreme for an engine of this size because uh, it's tuned to the maximum and it's basically ready to explode every second of the race. It's no, there's no electronics controlling it. You have this old school full start just to get it going. You have a normal carburetor, normal exhaust, air filter. Uh, it, everything is kept simple, simple engineering, but effective and done to the modern standards. So the next part is obviously the carburetor. So the carburetor itself is nothing special and nothing new, but it's a vital part and a vital component. This is what makes the car go, this is what mixes the air and the fuel and uh, gets the right amount of performance and what you want out of the car. You can see these hoses which suck the fuel into the carburetor itself, a little pump in the middle and this pulley which is controlled by the servo arm which opens up a butterfly inside the car inside the carb and uh, allows more air inside which basically get, makes the car go. This is how the car accelerates. Okay, so the air filter, a vital component which provides your car with air, which provides your engine with air. And what's important is to keep the top dead center of the car as light as possible. This is why it's made of carbon fiber, which is strong, light and sturdy. As you can see on the top, it has a little sponge which keeps all the debris from the air outside of the cylinder head and it needs to be cleaned at least once a race. It's also filled with oil, so as, as much as dust as you can can be kept outside of the filter itself and the cylinder head. Okay, so the drivetrain. The drivetrain is also a vital component because it, you can control through it and the gear ratios how fast the car will go on the straights and the the corners etc it's controlled with the clutch bell connected to the axle of the engine connected to the small pinion which is connected obviously to this big gear connected to a small pinion in the back and differential which gets the, the rear wheels going basically uh, this clutch is a centrifugal clutch which expands and catches onto this clutch bell which you can see right now in a motion and basically slips a little and then jams and moves this small pinion which in reaction moves the differential and the reels, rear wheels themselves. Some would say the exhaust pipe itself is not important but it is a vital component because in two-stroke cars like these uh, you can control the torque or the high RPM range with the exhaust pipe itself. That is why we have different models for different tracks or for different needs. If you need more torque you will have the torque version of this exact pipe I have on the car now. So the car has all that power, all that torque, all that high RPM range, we need a lot of stopping power to get it to stop. That is why we have full hydraulic brakes on these RC cars. This, as you can see, is the master cylinder for the front brake system. It's controlled by the servo which pulls this arm and makes the fluid go through this hose into the caliper itself on the front. I will show you the caliper now. Yeah, it looks pretty good. These are the Mechatech brakes and these are two piston brakes connected obviously with the hose to the cylinder and these stop these little epoxy, epoxy disc brakes which stop the car immediately and efficiently. Trust me, they do. So to keep all this weight and power planted and fast for the corners we need advanced shocks like these. These are the newest shocks from Mechatech and they are very good. You can see they are very versatile. You can tune the hardness of the spring, you can tune the oil inside, you can also screw them to change the height, to change the preload. As you can see this has a little chamber on the top which is made in certain types when you crash and 
the oil would overflow and break the insides this gives it a little more space to overflow and to keep your shocks safe and secure in any certain moment or in any situation in the race this you can control the preload with this little screw through these bolts so it's a very simple but very efficient mechanism basically like on a real car but the true heroes come into play now because it's the servers who do all the work it's the servers who brake who steer and who accelerate the car time and time around throughout years and years of racing and beating in different conditions these are very advanced as you can see these servo arms are connected by these little rods to the rest of the car to the master cylinders to the steering rod as you can see it moves when i move the wheels they're connected to the carburetor itself to move the butterfly inside the mechanism to get the car going also it's possible to have one servo on the steering but we use two to counter each other's movement in case of a crash because they're not powerful enough to handle a crash the gears inside are very fragile and the last but not least the big block which provides all of the servos with power uh, also known as a battery this particular one is a life a battery at 6.6 .6 volts but many people use lipo you can use any sort of battery you want as long as the voltage is compatible with servos if you use a 7.4 volt lipo battery on a 6.6 .6 volt servo you will obviously ruin it so you will either need a compatible servo or a little transformer to change the voltage to your needs and that is it people i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one